A North County school serving children with special needs may be forced to close its doors. The decision by Del Mar City leaders to evict the school. COVID cases continue to climb and vaccine requirements are becoming more common. What you need to know to be prepared. And a San Diego tennis player is eyeing gold at the upcoming Paralympics in Tokyo. The positively San Diego streak he's hoping will lead to a big win. ABC 10 News at 6 starts now. A school that serves children with special needs in Del Mar is being evicted by the city. But tonight, the Winston School says it's not going without a fight. Good evening, I'm Kimberly Hunt. And I'm Steve Atkinson. The city announced its decision earlier this week. All new at 6, our ABC 10 News anchor Lindsay Pena shows us how this battle started and what happens next. The Winston School in Del Mar is gearing up for the start of another year. But just this week learned its lease with the city was terminated. Three weeks before school starts in the middle of a pandemic for special needs kids. Dr. Dina Harris is the head of the school, which serves roughly 120 kids with a variety of learning disabilities. We work with families that a student just needs a little bit more support, uh, but are brilliant and talented and creative but need a smaller environment. Last Wednesday, the city council held a special meeting and voted to end the lease. According to the city, the Winston School missed multiple deadlines to submit complete plans to renovate the school, which was a term of its lease. To that, the school says they have tried to comply, but there continue to be issues the two sides simply can't agree on. I'm required by the lease to do something, but they have to approve it, and then they have to permit it. And it's like chicken egg. A statement from Del Mar Mayor Terry Gasterlin says, quote, I have long valued as an educator and as the aunt of a special needs child what Winston does. And that makes being landlord in this situation excruciating. But we have to do what is right for the city and that's to be responsible landlords. Dr. Harris says they'll now utilize any legal option available to them to keep the school right where it is. This is an injustice. These children and the donors of this school deserve the Del Mar City Council to honor the agreement we made. I'm never, never going to give up. Lindsay Pena, ABC 10 News. The Winston School's lease is set to expire in 2023 unless another agreement is worked out. And with the Delta variant driving up COVID-19 cases, more concert venues, universities, and businesses are requiring proof of vaccination or a negative COVID test. ABC 10 News reporter Mimi Alcala is joining us now live from the county testing site at San Diego State with some of the changes we're seeing. Hi, Mimi. Hi, Kimberly. Yeah, this testing site here at San Diego State's Alumni Center actually had to reopen because of the demand for COVID-19 testing here in San Diego County. They actually just closed the doors here just about 30 minutes ago. It does reopen tomorrow at 10 a.m. and goes until 5.30 p.m. So more and more companies are starting to require proof of vaccinations or a negative COVID-19 test. AEG Presents, which is one of the largest live music companies, announced that starting October 1st, people attending concerts at venues it owns or operates will have to show proof of vaccination, including the popular Coachella Festival. So a spokesperson tells me concert goers will need to bring a physical copy of their vaccine card, a photo of it or a digital copy. They say that October date was specifically chosen to allow time for unvaccinated ticket holders and staff to become fully vaccinated. Until then, they are still allowed uh, to show a negative COVID-19 test taken within 72 hours of the show date. Now, when it comes to fake vaccination cards, something we've been hearing about, several federal authorities have warned about how serious that crime can be. It's a violation of federal law and you can get a hefty fine and up to five years in prison for forging government seals that are found on the vaccine card. We did have a chance to speak with Ryan Claybo, a project coordinator for the county's testing and vaccination efforts. He says vaccination sites are seeing more and more people come through since the Delta variant started spreading. If you want to avoid the mandatory weekly testing for your employer, definitely uh, get in line with that vaccination and go through the process. All three of our vaccines are available at all of our sites now. 
And just a quick reminder that all of the COVID-19 testing and vaccination sites that the county runs are completely free of charge and most are walk in like the one here at San Diego State where we are live. Mimi Alcala, ABC 10 News. Good point, Mimi. Easy to get a test. Thank you. A CDC committee unanimously recommended a third vaccine dose today for immunocompromised Americans 12 and older. This only applies to the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines. The FDA says there's not enough data yet to determine if an extra dose of Johnson & Johnson is necessary. The committee's recommendation is in line with the emergency use authorization the FDA approved last night. The CDC director signed off on it today. The local NAACP is calling for San Diego's mayor and the FBI to open an investigation into a post allegedly made by a member of the San Diego Police Department. The organization posted screenshots of the post on its website. And we blurred that post because we have not independently confirmed it, but the NAACP says it mentions Second Amendment rights and alleges hundreds of officers would join in resisting the city and state if forced to get a vaccine, be tested or wear a mask. We have to act now. There's no urgency. If people don't wake up, we're going to lose this fight. The fact that he actually mentioned that the Second Amendment will be taken away from us caused me a uh, great pause. A spokesperson for the San Diego Police Department says they are aware of the post, adding that it was made by one person and the department is reviewing it to determine if any policies were violated. Mayor Todd Gloria says he has asked the chief of police to report to him after the review. We also saw another huge jump in new single day COVID cases today. The county reported 1700 new infections. Even as cases rise, deaths do remain low. None were reported today. The second largest fire in California's history is only getting bigger. The Dixie fire up north is now 517,000 acres. It's 31% contained. Parts of Northern California are dealing with excessive heat and some areas saw triple digit temperatures today. The Dixie fire has destroyed more than 1,100 homes and businesses. It will be another humid weekend here in San Diego. Look at that beach right now. And ABC 10 News meteorologist Angelica Campos is joining us with what we can expect over the weekend. Angelica. Hi, Kim. Yes, it's going to be warm and humid once again, but just to our north, the temperatures are going to be even hotter. As you head up to LA, they actually do have an excessive heat warning in effect and farther north for the Dixie fire. The conditions will continue to, to be very challenging with heat advisories and temperatures set to remain close to 100 degrees for our county. The warmest places for the weekend will be in the mountains and deserts. And last night in Borrego Springs, the temperature, the low temperature was 89 degrees, breaking the record of 87. Today still trending below average, but the nights are staying very warm and it's all due to the high humidity levels. Heading into tomorrow, temperatures will be close to 80 degrees along the coast, but a few degrees lower than today. Inland communities will see a drop only by two or three degrees, but in the mountains, we're going to gain about two or three degrees in the deserts. will stay close to average around 107. I'll have the rest of the forecast and your seven day coming up. We'll see you then. Thanks, Angelica. And you can beat the heat this weekend. We have tips for keeping cool on the ABC 10 News app. You can find it for free in the App Store. We are seeing more diversity in San Diego County compared to a decade ago. We're taking an in-depth look at one segment of the population that's growing rapidly. New U.S. Census data shows people in our county that identify as more than one race has skyrocketed. More than 520,000 people say they fall in that category, up from 158,000 a decade ago. That's a 229% jump. Nancy Saki, president and CEO of the United Way of San Diego County, talked about why that might be. And I actually think that part of that is that people feel more comfortable admitting it, that so much has changed in our society. Sure, there's still some, some, some negativity around that, but I think people are much more open to admitting it. The trend we're also seeing in our county is also being seen across the U.S. In 2020, nearly 34 million people reported being more than one race. That's compared to 9 million in 2010 and under 7 million in 2000, which was the first year respondents had the option. I'm not sure if that represents growth or that represents change from those that were checking off the wider Caucasian box versus um, the two 
nationalities. Other demographics have shifted as well. People who identify as white only made up less than 50% of the county's population. That's down from 64% in 2010. We expect that the uh, ethnic mix of people in our county is going to continue to change, that we will come to where we are um, minority major majority eventually. And this just really indicates that we are on that path. Those who identify as Hispanic or Latino grew by 128,000 and now make up a third of our population. Father Joe's has plans to turn an East Village property into affordable and supportive housing for people experiencing homelessness. The organization has struck a deal with God's Extended Hand, a ministry that closed its doors today. The ministry operated out of a building at 16th and Island Avenue. Father Joe says in addition to housing for the homeless, the new property will also include space for God's Extended Hand to continue its work.